Hello. Good evening, peace be upon you. This is Professor Shukar, and in this video, we are going to talk about acute cholecystitis. And as you know, my videos are a stepwise approach that when you see a case of acute appendicitis, acute cholecystitis, then how should you proceed? So in stepwise approach, if you see, the first step is, does the patient has acute cholecystitis or not? Then, is acute cholecystitis complicated or not? Meaning by, has a complication set in it or no complication is set in it? Meaning by, does the patient is empyema or has an abscess or has an inflammatory mass within which there is a necrosis and microabscesses? Confirmed by investigation, patient has acute cholecystitis or not. Not only that, is it complicated or not complicated? And third, also to rule out other diseases which present with pain in the right upper abdomen. And then start, the next step is, or along with it is, to start conservative measures. And once conservative measures have been started, then a very important question is to be started is, what is going to be the subsequent treatment? Are we going to continue with the conservative treatment and then do cholecystectomy later on? Or we want to do cholecystectomy now and if now, when? Within few days, within one day, and what should be the criteria giving rise to the concept of early, urgent, and interval cholecystectomy? Treatment of acute cholecystitis stays to be cholecystectomy. The only point is when. Early or after interval and in some cases in emergency. Cholecystectomy. You see, acute cholecystitis, when we're talking about, is a inflammatory condition. We know this thing that it is a inflammatory condition. Wherever there is inflammation, there are classical signs of inflammation. As you remember, there is pain, there is tender, there is fever, there is leukocytosis. Pain, tenderness, fever, leukocytosis. Acute cholecystitis, there is going to be pain. And obviously it is in the gall bladder is in this area. The pain is going to be in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen or in the middle abdominal adjacent area there is going to be tenderness obviously tenderness in right subcostal region which is going to manifest itself as no fish sign which I am going to explain later on there is going to be fever and there is going to be leukocytosis let me elaborate the pain usually in the case of acute cholecystitis the cause of stones as we all know and that stone goes and st is stuck at the neck. It stuck the neck, the gallbladder contracts over it to give rise to immense amount of colicky pain. Or as the inflammation sets in, it may be non-colicky, but the pain may be because of inflammation. So pain is felt in right hypochondrium, often radiates through to the back, close to the pip of the right scapula. It is continuous lasts more than six hours because less than six hours pain can be caused just because of a stone obstructing the, the cystic duct in the neck of gallbladder and then it gets dislodged from there and pain disappears as in bilirubin colic. It is exacerbated by moving and breathing and patient feels nausea and often vomits because it is a GIT symptom. On general physical examination Patient will have tachycardia, there will be increased pulse, there is going to be fever, but these signs could be present in a very low time, they will not be that pronounced in the early stages of acute cholecystitis. When you are going to examine the abdomen, one might see a fullness in the region of right hypochondrium only in those patients who are thin built whose abdominal scaphoid, 
then one might observe that during inspection. But important features comes in palpation. There is tenderness in the right hypochondrium and since the tenderness is severe, the inflammation is more, it can manifest itself as a Murphy sign. Murphy sign is not a deep tenderness, eliciting deep tenderness in right subcostal region. In fact, palpate the abdomen just below the tip of the ninth coastal cartilage. Ask the patient to take a deep breath. When the liver and the attached gallbladder descend and strike the palpating hand, the patient will experience a sharp pain which prevents further inspiration. It appears like if patient is catching his breath. A mask could be palpable, which is an enlarged gallbladder may be palpable, and at a later stage, inflammatory mass may become palpable. This will still be very tender and moves little with respiration. The question is, is it complicated acute cold status or not? The only difference between two is, in a cholecystitis which is complicated, the inflammation is severe. And it's the manifestation of severe inflammation which presents the clinical feature to differentiate what it is. For example, if some days have passed, pain is not subsiding, on examination, the tenderness increasing, the tachycardia is persisting, men worsening, the fever is persisting and worsening, and if you feel over here, you can listen, you can feel a mass over here, which is showing that it could be a complication setting in, then that would be a severe acute inflammation indicating the patient could be having an empyema or necrosis and perforation of the wall of gallbladder resulting in an inflammatory mass and abscesses. Now in order to confirm the diagnosis, we need two sets of medication primarily, one to show us the severity of inflammation and that is by means of blood CP, leukocytosis, neutrophilia. How high is the leukocytosis, how marked neutrophilia tells us it's a severe acute inflammation or a complication as second. In ultrasound, one has gallstones, biliary sludge, pus, and thickened gallbladder wall or fluid layer in the wall of the gallbladder fluid around the gallbladder mass, gallbladder region. Now mind you, if the inflammation is not that much, patient may be showing gallstone because the commonest cause of more than 99% of the cause is gallstone or biliary sludge, that could be present. Gallbladder wall will be thickened in all places and there may be a fluid, little fluid around or the wall of the gallbladder may be thickened. But if you can see pus or you can see mass, then it means a complication is set in because in empyema the gallbladder will be palpable which will be tender obviously and in micro abscesses in perforation necrosis there is an inflammatory mass so one can feel the mass in the right half of obviously this mass is tender and this moves with respiration one has to start conservative treatment and the first principle is since it's a GIT Patient has nausea and vomiting, he cannot tolerate anything orally and his condition is going to get worse because whenever you're going to give him some heat, the gallbladder is going to contract. Nail per mouth and intravenous fluid administration until the pain resolves. Administration of analgesics, administration of antibiotics. You must give analgesics to make patient comfortable. Analgesics are going to make patient comfortable but they do not alter the signs and they may confuse you. Usually the microorganisms are gram-negative and anaerobes, so you have to give an antibiotic which takes covers of all of them like cefazoline, cefuroxin, which are sphalosporin, second generation, the third generation, and then gentacin, you have to combine with that. We know the treatment of cholecystitis is cholecystectomy. Reason is because patients now have a stone and the stones are symptomatic. But, when to do cholecystectomy? Everything depends upon monitoring of temperature, pulse and other physical signs, which are the tenderness, which is the guarding, which is the mass, 
if it's present there's increase in the mass or there's decrease in the mass if monitoring shows that the patient does not have complicated cholecystitis it means if you monitor a patient and you tell us the patient does not have a complication in the gallbladder which is inflamed then perform early cholecystectomy and that is done within week of the onset of a disease as usually within few days there could be another scenario then monitoring shows that the patient has a complicated cholecystitis meaning by empyema or inflammatory mass continue conservative measures and when the inflammation has subsided then perform interval or late cholecystectomy which is 4 to 6 weeks and the reason is this because in complication the the, the region of caudal triangle and the organ which is present around the stomach or around the gallbladder which includes the duodenum which includes the omentum they are all stuck over there and since they are stuck over there the dissection the canal triangle becomes more difficult it difficult to identify the cystic artery identify the common bile duct identify the cystic duct identify the duodenum and the chances of injury to these organs become more it's okay so therefore if you are going to late it is called as late because as compared to early it is late as per the time time period is late it is few days one week it is four to six weeks so that is why that is early and this one is called as late and since this is being done after an interval of an episocal stigmas it is also called as interval cholecystectomy then there could be a totally different scenario patient has complicated cholecystitis and in spite of conservative measures patient condition is deteriorating pulse is increasing temperature is becoming more he is become more toxic tenderness which regarding is increasing it means now the gallbladder can perforate it can cause biliary peritonitis it can result in severe toxemia patient can go later on to septic shock and patient can die so therefore now one must go immediately and do cholecystectomy this is emergency cholecystectomy it is always done in the next ot day or whenever the ot is safely available because already we have started the conservative treatment and we have brought the patient into an optimum condition the problem is now i was telling you this thing that dissection is difficult the callus triangle may not be that clearly discernible or visible so therefore if it is difficult to dissect the area of the callus triangle then one must do fundus first cholecystectomy usually normal cholecystectomy it is the callus triangle where the dissection start but here the dissection will start from fundus one will go up to the neck and then define the areas define the the structures and do cholecystectomy there is another problem could be even if one may start from fundus first one reaches the area of callus triangle one may may still find dissection difficult and others don't take the risk do a subtotal cholecystectomy remove the gall bladder up to the neck leaving the area of callus triangle virgin and by pursuing suture any suture you close the cystic duct at their neck and even if you cannot do because of any reason do a cholecystostomy remove gall bladder no sorry open gall bladder remove all the stones and the sludge and everything put in a tube and come out because here the main aim is to save the patient life first and the type of cholecystectomy or polycystectomy cholecystectomy is a secondary thing later on then one can go in and one can proceed for cholecystectomy i hope this helps you so have a good day continue smiling see you again bye bye